Hey everybody, it's Gamaragi. We're back with Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch. Last time we defeated the White Witch and her crazy uh, imagination figments, <laughs> known as the Council. Man, that was it was a crazy series of fights, but uh, we got through it. I used a lot of really nice items that I've been saving. I don't have those anymore, but that's fine. Hey, don't worry about it. Is there stuff here I can do? No. So, uh, yeah, we actually unlocked a bunch of post-game content now. So we're just gonna kinda leisurely go and check on that stuff. There is one, uh, side quest I, would, I do wanna do, uh, with Horus. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure what else there really is. There's apparently some more stuff in the casino we can do. And they added some more challenges to the Solosseum. But uh, honestly, I haven't been back to the Solosseum since our, the trials that we went through. So. I don't know. Typically in, in, in games, I'm, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to, um, <laughs> like, battle gauntlets. Just because I've, I've been through some pretty rough ones. Oh man, you're back? Did you lose your diary again? Why are you back? Why? Oh, it's you. Hello, mister. Hmm? Oh, why hello there, dear boy. Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Eh? Oh, not at all, old thing. I was just exercising the old thinking muscle. I rather suspect my travels might be at an end, don't you know? Really? So you're going to finish up your diary and head, head on home, huh? That's about the size of it, yes. I made a jolly exciting discovery that I think might top off my story rather nicely. What kind of discovery? What kind indeed, old stick? You see, I came across a large and rather ruined looking door on the far edge of a forest. I wrote the details down for posterity, of course. Let me just grab the old diary. Oh, I say. I could have sworn it was... Oh, blast and botheration. For goodness flippin' sake, no need to explain, we know the drill. Come on, uh, shall we, olive boy? Yeah. <laughs> Calmly agree to look for the missing diary yet again. Leave it to us, mister. We'll find it for you. You really are a brick, old thing. A dyed-in-the-wool true blue brick. What? <laughs> what does that mean? So if you wrote the details down in your diary, you must rem remember where you last had it, huh? Well, now that you mention it, I suppose I must. Yes, it must have been by the door itself. There's simple. Righto, just tell us where this ruined door is and we'll be off. Well now, let me see. Uh, yes. I went for a stroll in the countryside, don't you know? Made a beeline south of town and ended up in a forest that was very deep indeed. I wandered on deeper and deeper and came to a big ruined door, right? Yes, I did rather. Stopped and scribbled a passage or two right in front of it. Well, the muse was willing and all that. Do you know, it might very well be there. Right, Toe? Can't think of where that might be exactly, but we'll go and have a look for you. We're nice like that, see? Wow, that's the vaguest directions he's given yet. South and into a deep forest. Alrighty. Alright, let's go see how many quests unlocked over here. Probably a bazillion. Ah, not a bazillion. Quite a few, though. <laughs> Fairy in Golden Grove is waiting for somebody. Castaway Cove. A pirate treasure map. Uh huh. Forest south of Dingdong Dell. Smiley and Surly have opened a weapon shop on board the Iron Wyvern, but appear to be having a spot of bother. Some mysterious knights in armor have appeared inside the Ivory Tower. Go and talk to the knights. Alrighty. That's quests all over the place. Quests all over the place. And of course, bounty hunts. Many, many bounty hunts. 
And these are all like super intense. I'm just gonna accept them all. I don't know if I'm gonna do these bounty hunts, honestly. But maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I'm just gonna accept them anyway. <laughs> They're all over the place. Do I have any? I have three cards. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you, Swift Solutions, man. Okay, I think Horus should be in Ding Dong Dell. He did say he would meet us where we first met him, but uh, I guess when I checked before, it was not a good time. <laughs> but he should be there now, I think. So we'll go talk to him. Okie dokie, artichoke. Feels nice to run around in Ding Dong Dell again. This place is beautiful. Well, hello there. Found you. Ollie, you're here at last. I've been waiting for ages. Hi, Horace. Hey, this is... This is where we met him in the first place. Seems like flipping ages ago, that does. Hang on. Didn't he say he'd come back to where we first met him when he remembered something? Horace, does this mean your memory? Not quite, but I did remember one thing. What? What is it? Come on, Mun, spit it out. <laughs> Patience, Pipsqueak. Ollie, I bet you want to solve another riddle before I tell you, don't you? Uh, I guess. You see the monument here? It has some Nazcon runes on it. They're a clue to something in the wizard's companion. Can you work out what it is? Oh, uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh-oh. This is gonna take me some time. <laughs> okay. Uh, finally deciphered that thing. <laughs> uh, it says, mix black stroke of first and second spell to make another that will serve you well. Okay. So... Go to our spells, uh, which are over here. So here's the first, first and second spell. So mix black stroke of the first and second spell. So we have a V shape and a horseshoe shape. Just gotta find the one that has both of those. There we go. And that is the Unleash spell. Unleash. Okay. Whew, man. Tricky. <laughs> Real tricky. Did you manage to decipher the Nazcon runes, Ollie? That are a clue to something in the Wizard's Companion. Can you work out what it is? Yeah. That's right. Well done. I'm very impressed, Ollie. All you had to do was combine two of the simplest spells, Form Familiar and Gateway, to make a super duper one. Unleash. It's a reminder that no matter how far you go, you should never forget the basics. And solving it is proof that you're ready to learn another super duper spell. Ooh. Thunderstorm. Summon a terrifying tempest that splits the sky in twain. Finally, I get a... electric attack. <laughs> Thank you, Horus. Alright, enough of the big head, Doc. What was it you remembered? I remembered the ash. Ash? You mean... So you know about the white ash that fell here too, do you? That ash, the mana, it turned all the people into horrible monsters. And when I saw it, I remembered. That was how I died too. Jeepers. Well, I never. 
A long, long time ago, the same ash fell. It killed us all. But that's all I remembered. Horus. I heard that the big stone here was a monument to the Sage of Ages. So I thought if I came here, it might help me re to remember. But I don't think this is where I died. There's something else I need to remember. Something more important. I'm going to carry on traveling. I need to find a place where I died. Uh, find the place where I died. Okay. If I can find it, I think I might remember everything. Uh, remember everything. I have to try. See you again soon. Okay, Horace. Sure, man. I know where he's going. Because I checked there before, remember? <laughs> Oops, this is not the right place. Just testing you, just testing you. That wasn't right. It's this one. <laughs> Oops. Here we go. Yeah, I remember him being here. This is such a cool place. Okay. You should be here, right? I wasn't just imagining things. Aha! Wait a minute. You're not Horus. Who beest ye? Ah, it has been a while, has it not? Huh? S sorry, sir, have we met? <laughs> you really don't know? Well, I suppose I have changed my appearance somewhat since last uh, since we last met. What the flippin' heck is he on about? Oliver, I've been waiting for you. I have a tale I dearly wish to share with you. Uh, okay. There was once a kingdom where we now stand. A mighty king united the surrounding lands and established his realm here. This king treated all his subjects equally, be they humans, animals, or magical creatures. A new era of peace was dawning. Or so it seemed. But there were those who despised the king, covetous souls who envied his power. They plotted against him, sowing discord throughout the kingdom, and in so doing set Nazca on the road to ruin. But there my memory becomes hazy. I cannot recall their names, nor even their outward appearance. Were there twelve? Even now that my amnesia has been cured, their faces remain hidden to me. Listen, man, I'm not sure what you want us to say. It ain't as if we've got the first flipping clue what the rotters look like. I know that, but I also know that I recorded my fears about them somewhere. I left a message, a warning, so that when people saw them, they would know to beware. But where? Wait, yes. I hid it in a magical tome that would never age or decay. The wizard's companion. Which means you must have you must have seen it. Think. I wanted people to know what they looked like, perhaps what they wore? Yes, that makes sense. The robes they wore are described somewhere in that book, along with a warning. You must know where it is. I'm sure that's the key that will unlock my memories. Please, help me recover what remains of, of my missing past. Uh, somewhere in the Wizard's Companion, huh? Uh, okay. Maybe with the clothes? These are weapons. These are clothes. Suits of armor. Would it be in there? Hmm. Maybe not. Okay, I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but, uh,. The clue that you're looking for when you're trying to find what clothes they were wearing is actually in the ingredients. <laughs> and it's the thing that sounds bad. Seeds of discord. Yeah. That's probably one of the most obscure riddles ever.
The answer should be wizard's robes. Wow, tricky. Real tricky. It was they who were at the root of the kingdom's strife. It was they who undermined that noble king, those twelve evil souls. But I cannot seem to recall what they looked like. I'm certain that I hid a warning in the magic book you hold, something to show the reader what they looked like. Please tell me the name of the garment they wore. Okay. Yes, that's right. Now I remember. Those fiends clad themselves in wizard's robes. I can see them now, deep in deliberation. They were the Council of Twelve. Each member was given a title of Zodiac. And, and that's not all. Well, come on, Mun, spit it out. What have you remembered? I was there. All those millennia ago. I swore fealty to the Wizard King. Yes, I now remember. I was a Sage of Nazca. You were? But that means... Did you know Cassiopeia? Wh what How do you know that name? Cassiopeia. Queen Cassiopeia. It was so long ago. I have sensed her spirit at times over the years. It is unmistakably her. But I know not what befell her. I think I'd better take over here. Now pay attention, because I'll only say this once. Uh, I see. So Queen Cassiopeia, she... She gave in to the darkness, and that ash I saw fall on Ding Dong Dell, that was her doing? But Oliver, you really might be the one to save her. The Wizard King entrusted you with his wand after all. Oh wow. You had to talk to him after you beat Gallus? <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, we'll save her, sir. I just know we will. Ah, that's the spirit. Of course, the Wizard King's wand is not yet at full strength. Flippin' heck, not this again. Ha, <laughs> fear not. To one who was once called the Sage of Ages, it is but a trifling matter. Eh? So we don't have to go tripsing around after magic stones then? Thank Flip for that. Now, let me begin. Awake, O oh wand of the Wizard King. Awake, O oh Astra. Oh man, he taught us the Astra spell. Cast a spell known only to legends. Oh man. Wish I had that for the final final battle there. <laughs> so it's uh all ready to go now, huh? Gee, thank you, sir. The true power that dwells within the wand can sometimes require effort to be drawn out. I believe that you alone can harness the full power of Astra. With it, you'll be able to cast spells that only a king among wizards has ever wielded. I sure hope so. And you're sure you're alright setting the likes of us loose with such snazzy spells? We've just met you, after all. <laughs> You've never had a problem accepting spells from me before. You what? What do you mean, before? Hold on a minute, you're not telling me. You're Horus? <laughs> I was wondering when the Gilder would drop. Uh, better late than never. Indeed, I was once the sage known as Horolog Horologium, or Horus, to my friends. Who'd have thought a mouthy little brat like Horus would have grown up to be so important looking, eh? How many times must I tell you? I was the sage of ages. I was no normal boy. Wow. So does this mean you finally got your memory back? Indeed it does, and I have much to thank you for. Now, there's a little... I can do to save Queen Cassiopeia in my current state. I'm afraid that I must humbly ask you to do all in your power to free her from the darkness. Sure thing, Horus. We'll save her. You see if we don't. You are a brave and pure-hearted warrior, Oliver. I will pray for your success. Oh, yeah. Mr. Horus, the Sage of Ages. Cool. He gives us a super nice spell, I believe. I'm not sure how much damage it does, or even if I can check. <laughs> 54 MP? Wow. A spell whose name exists only in legends, and which only the most legendary of wands can cast. Dang. It's another, f oh wow, it's another field spell, but it's light instead of dark. 
Huh. Okay. Man, that would have been really helpful, actually. <laughs> Oliver, there's something I need to tell you. What is it, Horus? I must tell you about Nazca and Cassiopeia. And about myself. Before you attempt to save Cassiopeia, you deserve to know the truth. It may take some time, but I hope you can spare the time to listen to what I have to say. Oh, okay. Great, great, grand sage. <laughs> Thank you, Oliver. Our story begins here long ago, where the kingdom of Nazca once flourished. Though it may appear bleak and barren now, in those days it was a mighty empire that combined mighty magic with advanced technology. It was a prosperous realm where poverty and pestilence were all but unknown, and its people enjoyed a life of peace and plenty. But man was never wont to count his blessings, and greed soon reared its ugly head. In spite of all they had, the populace demanded more. Friends turned upon one another, families were torn apart, and each citizen strove to better his own lot and outdo his neighbor. Sounds like a recipe for a right old mess, that. And indeed it was. It led to a series of conflicts that would span centuries. The Wizard Wars. But the course of history was changed with the arrival of a single wizard. Wow, one wizard made that big a difference? Indeed. This wizard wielded not one, but two wands. His mastery of magic was unparalleled, and he soon turned the tide of the war. Through his power, the bitter conflict that many thought would never end was brought to a conclusion in the space of mere days. Crikey. Sounds like someone you'd want on your side in a fight. He was indeed fairy. He was lauded as a hero by all the peoples of the world, and his reward was the crown of Nazca. Thus did he become the Wizard King. The Wizard King? Cassiopeia's father? The very same. Now, shortly after peace returned to the world, the Wizard King hid one of his wands in the distant land of Atumnia. He sealed it away that it might never be used for evil. Which brings me to my latest puzzle. It has been some time since I last posed you a question, has it not? I guess it has, huh? Excellent. My question is this. What was the name of the wand that the Wizard King sealed away? I believe that you know it well. Speak to me again when you have your answer. Oh, that's easy. Mornstar. Easy. Indeed. It was the very wand that you carry with you now. I wonder how the valley where it was sealed fares. In those days, it was filled with the most beautiful flowers. Let us continue our tale there. I'll be waiting for you, Oliver. Come and find me. Oh man, Horace. He's taking us around the world. <laughs> this is interesting stuff, though, huh? That's why I wanted to do this quest. Okay, let's go to... Uh, Tombstone Trail. Okay, here we are. Back where we got Mornstar. Had to go all the way through Tombstone Trail. <laughs> How's it going, horse? Thank you for coming, Oliver. This valley changed so much. It was once a place of beauty, awash with flowers of every color. No matter. What is done is done. Now let me continue my tale. The Wizard King ascended the throne and won great renown as a just ruler, treating all his subjects equally, be they human or otherwise. They, in turn, repaid him by rallying round their new monarch, and together they rebuilt the ruined realm more swiftly than any had thought possible. So he got all the beasties pulling their weight too, did he? I never knew that, mun. Nice. Indeed. The Wizard King truly was a man like no other. It was then, with the kingdom all but rebuilt, that he chose three servants from among his subjects. A swashbuckling sea captain to represent the race of men, a great wolf to represent the animals, and a serpent lord to represent the creatures. Each was wholly devoted to his master, and did all that the wizard king asked. But of the three, the serpent lord was the wisest, and the most committed to his master's cause. He was known as the king of cobras, and what a mind he had. Ah, to think of how he was then. It seems as good a time as any for your next question. You've encountered these three servants on your travels, but can you recall the name of the mighty snake you faced? 
Ah. Uh, I'm sure listening to me will have served to jog your memory. Speak to me again when you have your answer. Okay, that should be in the wizard's companion. <laughs> it was like, oh, it was Apep, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a a Apep. Let me just verify such things. Okay, apparently Cerboreus is the only one that I could find. <laughs> I'm not sure where Apep is in here. It's kind of weird that they would leave him out like that, but... Uh... Okay, I'm pretty sure I know how to spell that. Hopefully. A-E-P-E-P? -E -E -P? Is that right? Uh-oh. Okay, uh, let's try this one. A-A-P-E-P. -E -P. <laughs> there we go. I was close. That is correct. Though the three servants achieved so much, their reward was to be chased without dignity from the kingdom they had helped to build. But perhaps that is a tale for another day. Yes, we will continue our tale in the very ruins where you faced Apep. I will tell you how the Wizard King's three most loyal servants were driven to the path of evil. Until then, Oliver. Oh, man. Okay. Alright, here we are in the Vault of Tears, where we faced Apep. Man, this place is super cool. Oh, reliving memories. Reliving memories. Thank you for coming, Oliver. Shall we continue our tale? I said I would tell you of how the three keepers were driven from the kingdom, how they became evil. Below the king, at the head of the Nazcon government, sat the Council of Twelve, a group of lords known as the Zodiarchs. They were res responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the kingdom, they were supposed to be the ruler's closest advisors. But the Wizard King's rise to prominence was a source of consternation for the council, who feared his great power and the loyalty he commanded amongst the keepers. And so, as soon as Nazca was rebuilt and stability restored, the Zodiarchs conspired to assassinate him, and their conspiracy was a success. Th that's horrible! With the Wizard King eliminated, the council had complete control of the kingdom. The king's infant heir, Queen Cassiopeia, became no more than a puppet. Man, he seems to know an awful lot about this this stuff that was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> to compound their villainy, the council successfully implicated the keepers in the assassination, and they were banished from Nazca. Oh, okay. Apep lost all faith in humanity, and soon the power of the stone in his possession began to corrupt him transforming him at last into a servant of evil. Indeed, it was he who reduced this once great city to the ruins you see before you now. That's bad, like... But you've got to feel sorry for him, ain't it? Being framed for murdering your mate would be enough to make anyone go off the rails. Perhaps, but Apep possessed great wisdom. None could have predicted that he would suffer such a spectacular fall from grace. Speaking of predictions, yes. Open the book. Uh, you mean the wizard's companion? I do. As you may or may not know, its authors were able to see into the future. Turn to the final page. A prophecy is written there. A prophecy of what would become of a certain individual. That person's name, too, is hidden there. Can you discover their identity? This puzzle is much like life. You must start at the bottom and work your way to the top. Not forgetting to begin at the beginning, of course. The solution is not a simple one, but a worthy wizard will see to the heart of the problem. Alrighty. The very end. The very, very end. Out of darkness comes light. Keep this book ever at your side, wizard, and you shall one day be called a sage. Permit us to leave you with a poem, a prophecy. Heed it and repeat not the mistakes of the past. High above the clouds, the child of white light, cast the world once more into darkest night, 
The path unto the dawn was never fair. It is one fraught with suffering and despair. Well knoweth she of both their power, entombed there in her ivory tower. Though full many have sought to breach her keep, its walls are too high, its mysteries too deep. Hope springeth yet amidst the flowers. When you find them, you will find her bower. Each time you fear that you have lost your way, hark unto the child, mark what she would say. To your own self be true, all arrests upon you. Noise. That's cool. That's a cool prophecy. What is that? Cloud fish? <laughs> what am I looking at there? Okay. So, the white witch? Is that, is that the answer? Do you have the answer, Oliver? Uh... I think, maybe? Yep. Hmm. Tricky, huh? <laughs> that is correct. Perhaps one day the people of this world will see that the White Witch had nothing but the best of intentions. But first, she must make amends for what she did. Despair is no excuse. I guess you're right. I remember when she was kind of... Uh, was a kind little girl who loved flowers above all else. But that is a story for another time. If you're interested, I plan to visit a cave that lets one see into the past. I wish to see the old Cassiopeia once more. There's a cave that lets you see into the past? You've not heard of it? I'm certain that it is mentioned in that book of yours. When you've discovered its location, come and gaze into the past with me. Until then, Oliver. Uh, uh oh. He's going to a place I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. Aha! I found it! The Glittering Grotto. The legend in Yule is that this curious cave lets you take a glimpse into the past. Its complex layout makes it a popular destination for wizards in training, but they are often left disoriented by the eerie voices that can be heard within. I completely forgot we even saw a... Uh, like a scene from the past when we went in there the first time. Wow, okay. Ooh, it's pretty tricky to find. <laughs> Glittering Grotto, here we go. Well, there you are, Mr. Horace. He's not all the way at the bottom, thankfully. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, Oliver. Shall we continue our tale? Flowers always held a special significance for the people of the Kingdom of Nazca. They were seen as sacred symbols of peace and hope. Queen Cassiopeia loved nothing in the world more than flowers, and her every free moment was spent tending her garden. Her castle was always bursting with color, with beautiful bright flowers of every imaginable hue. Cassiopeia grew to be a splendid spirited young woman, everything her father could have wished for, and all that I had always hoped she would become. Huh? So you knew Queen Cassiopeia when she was growing up? I did. I knew her from when she was a mere babe in arms. But I digress. This talk of flowers and gardens, it reminds me. You have a wand made from an old stick, do you not? Oh, you mean the wand P gave me? That wand was a gift from the Wizard King. An eye to the... Uh, an eye... Oh, the Wizard King and I to the young Cassiopeia. It was? Jeepers. On it, we engraved our most deeply held wish for the princess's future. Ah, it was so long ago. I wish to hear those words again. Tell me, Oliver, what does it say? You know, I was wondering what this would be uh, about. So that stick is... How do I do this? There we go. So it's got some Nazcon right there. Okay. Uh, so I just deciphered that, and it says bring hope. That's a good goal to have. That is correct. Our most deeply held desire was that the people of Nazca should never lose hope. The hope of a brighter tomorrow. 
But what befell the realm after the Wizard King's untimely demise put paid put paid to any such wishes. The Council of Twelve devoted themselves solely to personal gain and thought nothing of the plight of the people. If only, if only I had done more. What do you mean, Horace? I said that I would tell you the truth, did I not? There is something that I must confess to you. Something I did. An act for which I can never forgive myself. Come to the ivory tower, to the chamber where the council sat. There I shall tell you everything. Until then, Oliver. What? Are you serious? I gotta go all the way to the council chamber? That's gonna take forever, man. Oh. Dang it, Horace. Uh, at last, we're here. <laughs> Whew. Running through this place is a pain in the butt, Mr. Horace. I've been waiting for you, Oliver. Shall we continue our tale? Long before I ever became known as the Sage of Ages, I fought in the Wizard Wars alongside my teacher, the Wizard King. I often think of those days. How long has it been since I was last here, I wonder? Blimey, Horace. You're saying you've been to this gaff before, like? Indeed I have. In the years after the Wizard Wars, I occupied the tenth seat on the council, taking the zodiacal title of Gallus. <gasps> oh, what? G Gallus? But isn't that, you know, him? Ah, yes. The Wizard King's ruse. Even in death, he strove to protect his daughter. I was later, of course, after my seat had become vacant. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. When I sat on the council, to my undying shame, I failed to notice the plotting of my fellow counselors. Ah, I who thought it myself so wise. They disposed of the wizard king and his three servants, then turned their attention to any who might stand in their way. And they considered me an obstacle to their complete domination of the kingdom. Sensing the grave danger I was in, I fled Nazca. I intended to bide my time to rally forces loyal to the crown and return to exact my revenge on the council. But the choice I made was wrong. I should have remained at the queen's side. But you couldn't, could you? Those rotters in the council were gunning for you, mun. It is a risk I should have taken. By leaving, I sealed the fate of the entire kingdom. Allow me to explain. In addition to my duties as the Zodiac, I had been charged with educating Queen Cassiopeia in the ways of magic. I took it upon myself to create a compendium of spells and arcane knowledge within, uh, or of knowledge, <laughs> arcane knowledge which I presented to the young queen. A compendium? You mean like a spell book? You, you mean? <laughs> I'd rather, th I'd rather think you know what I mean, but allow me to ask you the question for old time's sake. What was the name of that book? The Wizard's Companion. So it was Queen Cassiopeia's book first, I guess. Huh. Yes, you're quite right. I wrote the Wizard's Companion to aid Queen Cassiopeia in her magical education. But little did I know that this book would lead directly to the disaster that befell Nazca. You can't be flippin' serious! How could you? How could the Wizard's Companion have led to Nazca's destruction? What the heck are you on about, one? In my desire to create a tome fit for a queen, I included all manner of arcane magic, including the forbidden spell. But I failed to include detailed notes on the rights and wrongs of using such potent incantations. And I fled the kingdom before I could teach Queen Cassiopeia of the perils of the forbidden spell. I was so busy brooding on what manner of revenge I would exact on the council that I failed in my duty to care for to the queen. That is how she arrived at her fateful decision. That is why she did not know the true power of mana. But, but... It is my fault that Nazca fell, and that Queen Cassiopeia was transformed into the White Witch. How could I ever make amends for what I did? It was unforgivable. Reduced to a spirit, doomed to roam the world for all eternity, how could I ever save that poor girl from her fate? That is why I must humbly ask you to right my wrong, to save the Queen. You're the only one who can, Oliver. Don't worry, Horace. We'll save Queen Cassiopeia. We'll save the whole world, you see. You have my thanks. 
and I have some alchemical formulae for you. Formulae that I neglected to include in the Wizard's Companion. I pray that they will aid you on your quests. Whoa. And now for my final contribution to your cause, please accept this. A Mirror of Truth. And 10,000 guilders. Queen Cassiopeia waits within. I wish you luck, Oliver. The pure-hearted one. The savior of our world. Whew, thanks man. I already beat her, but uh, wow. So it was partially his fault. <laughs> for causing her to turn into the White Witch. Wow. Pretty major plot point there. Uh, okay, uh, what did I just get? I got a thing. What is that thing? A mirror? Is that like a... Equip item? What even is that? Oh, it's a key item. A magical mirror said to contain a great truth. No reflection appears when one gazes into it. Huh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Let's see what uh, formulae we just got, huh? Nothing there. Oh man, ultimate weapons for all. Sky tree wand. Old stick, mirror of truth. Oh, you use the mirror of truth to make the sky tree wand. Dang, he just gave me... He basically just gave me a better wand. Man, I really wish I had done this quest before the, we fought the final boss, but that's fine. That's fine. A sky tree wand. Looks like the stick, but shinier. And then these are ultimate uh, bard's harp and master thief's magnum. I do not have the materials for these at all. <laughs> okay. Fine by me. And Astra's getting replaced. I lose... Actually, I'm losing magic attack. This one has 75 magic attack. But this one has a lot more physical attack, which would make Rogi a lot stronger, actually. Hmm... I think I'm gonna have to do it. It's very interesting. Okay. Cool. A holy wand carved from the branch of an ancient tree whose flowers bloom in three different colors. Hmm. Okay then. All right, that was a uh, oh, that was a longer quest than I anticipated. Uh, we're just gonna end it here, guys. Next time, uh, I guess we'll check on the casino, and maybe something else. Uh, but yeah, that's that. <laughs> See you guys then. Bye bye.